questions that we're trying to answer when we read over the case studies are, what are your concerns with this person or the problem list for this person? What are the potential contraindications? And there are a lot less with the hip and knee than we had for the back when we went over it for the back. But there still may be some. And then name three exercises that you would avoid or you might avoid because of whatever's going on in that, with that person. What are the four best exercises you can think of for this person that may help alleviate symptoms? And what should the exercise progression be for that person, would you think? A six-year-old complains of pain in her right knee with going up and down stairs and getting up from a seated position. The pain is also worse in the AM when first trying to walk. She sometimes feels that the knee wants to give way and is afraid of falling. So based on demographic, um, what would be our concerns for this person? Well, would you say she has osteoarthritis probably? Yeah, that would be a good guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, probably an earlier stage if she's just starting to feel symptoms. A good indicator of that is the stairs. And I could have put in squatted too, but getting up from seated, so after being still for a while, having a hard time getting going after being still, so sleeping and sitting are the main ones. Um, and then the giving way. They really, f a lot of times, feel like the knee might give way. They don't stop, they stop trusting their knee, and, which makes wanting to go up and down stairs on that leg less desirable. So that, that would be a good guess. And six-year-old is a little bit on the young side, so this would be early, yes, for osteoarthritis at the knee, unless they've had some prior trauma. The other thing that I, d I didn't ask as a question, but something to be thinking about is, what might have predisposed a 60-year-old to osteoarthritis already? Or are there conditions that would have predisposed that? Can you think of? Big runner. Big runner with? Overweight. Overweight, overweight yeah. right. And big runner, not because they were a runner, but because of what? Probably. The running itself is fine. Yeah. But what, what could be happening? Form, but right, but what's happening in the knee joint? Instability? Not so much. So, not strong enough, not strong enough in the other parts. Which of the makes what happen at the joint? More compression. More compression, yeah. more rubbing. Yeah. What happens with more rubbing? The surfaces get less smooth. The cartilage starts to break down sooner. Spurs, yeah. Little spurring, right? So, what we're not the running itself doesn't. But if they've had any micro trauma, is what we're thinking of okay. along the way. That could predispose it if they've had a previous knee injury or surgery. A lot of people who are 60 who are experiencing these symptoms have had a prior knee injury or surgery, which wasn't a big deal at the time, but then kind of predisposes them if they've had a meniscectomy where they've taken a piece of the meniscus away. They're going to be more likely for this to occur if they don't stay strong. Right, so those are things that might have predisposed a 60-year-old to come in feeling a bit osteoarthritic at the knee. But this is definitely earlier stages. When they start, when they get really bad, they feel like the knee's gonna give way all the time. They feel like there's buckling instability. They really stop doing stairs. The potential contraindications for that person, what would you think you wouldn't want to do? I think anything that causes pain. Right. Or they stay in a pain-free range of motion, right? Perfect. We, do we want to maintain range of motion? Yes. Yeah. So how? If we, we want to stay in a pain-free range of motion, ideally, yes. So we can shorten range of motion while we're doing strength work. Mm -hmm. But do we want to shorten range of motion all the time? No. Yeah. How can we keep range of motion but not increase pain? Lighten. Lighten. Unload. Unloading, Unloading, right? Yeah. Unloading. Things where they feel comfortable without having to have a lot of load. So a light, a light leg spring, maybe, instead of a... Even the reformer footwork is really unloaded compared to standing squatting, for example. Right? So finding ways to have less pressure so they can actually maintain the range of motion. Um, okay, three exercises you would avoid at this stage. Right, uh, things that cause pain. So the things that I probably wouldn't push them into are deep squatting. I probably wouldn't do a lot of jumping work. I'd be more on stability work. Um, alignment work, unless they were got really good. So if all these symptoms start to go away, great. Then we're back to everything. But deep squatting and any jumping are the, really the things that I would probably not do for now. Um, lunging, right? 
deep lunges, yeah, deep lunging um, work, but holding a static lunge here, for example, could be good work, right? But the up and down of the lunging, either the back or the front, could be a lot of intensity, it could have a lot of intensity to it, yeah. And then four best exercises you could think of for this person that might help alleviate their symptoms. Footwork. 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 <laughs> Why? Strengthens your legs. Watch the alignment. It's close chain. Perfect. Strengthens closed chain. Watching alignment. And you can control the weight. Control the weight, yeah. right? And what else is happening when we get a joint moving? Oh, you're lubricating. You're lubricating the joint, right? Uh, the other thing, to go back, other things we might avoid would be things that put a lot of lateral or medial stress. So maybe standing side splits isn't your best bet. Maybe actually a kneeling side split would be better, right? Because we, we're not putting then the medial lateral stress if they're not strong enough. Yeah. Uh, so footwork is a good one. What's another good? I think like any kind of glute work, any kind of yeah. glute medius work, so sidelining, right? Great. Clams, right. All that stuff that's strengthening the hip. Strengthening the hip for what purpose? Stabilizing the knee. Right. What happens when a knee gets osteoarthritic to the structure of the knee, typically? What do we see? It gets valgus. Yes. Yeah, yes. So to slow down that valgus, we can strengthen, make sure that the glute medius and the hip rotators are doing their job. Uh, that, the, that will emphasize the strength and help the alignment. So we're keeping them as aligned as possible for as long as possible. Right, and we haven't talked about the foot and ankle yet, but tracking downward, if they're flattening and putting pressure on the inside of the foot, that's also gonna change the knee angle. So that would be strengthening through the whole leg would be a really good thing. Yeah, so standing work, standing leg lowers, things that are functional that they can do without pain. Yeah, perfect. And what should be the exercise progression for this person, would you think? Well, I would think going from you know, footwork on the reformer to um, supported squats and things like that. Yeah, so progressing pr pretty much supine, we said side lying maybe, mm -hmm. and then up to standing to get more functional right. again. And, and sitting, the chair work is really good. The chair work is really good for the quad. So maybe we go supine sitting, side lie. Mm -hmm. Standing will be the last one, but is really the most functional of them. So we'd want to get to that as much as we could.